Two of my all-time favorites coming together to bring it to you. A big old 28 ounce porterhouse steak with a herb butter for great seasoning. What in? Cast iron. Come on folks, this is something you don't want to miss. This cut might look a little intimidating, but it's not the way we do it. Come on, I'm getting the skillet hot. Hey, thank y'all for stopping by the kitchen today. Yep, in the kitchen. You heard me say it, I can cook in the kitchen on occasion. Sure, there's a lot of knobs and stuff in here that I may not be familiar with, so you'll have to bear with me. But let's talk about two things that I really love. What are they? Cast iron and a steak. Whew, and I broke out an old Griswold today and then really an old traditional cut of meat that was served way back in the 1814s. They think they took ownership of it. This guy on Porterhouse Road there in New York. He served a big giant steak he called the Porter House. That's what we're doing, but we're going to show you how to bring the most flavor out of it by making some herb butter. Yes, you heard me, but you got to do this in a piece of cast iron. Don't be grabbing you some Teflon skillet or something like that. Let's get that perfect sear, that perfect color on that steak and that perfect doneness, but bring out the greatest taste in the world. You might be wanting this recipe and just as always, just go down to the bottom of the video because I still have people getting lost. Scroll a little more and it'll say, show more. Hit that button right there, show more. A lot of things pop up. Don't let it shock you, but you go on down there, printable recipe. It'll take you right over to kentrollins.com slash blog. All the recipes is there. You'll be in good shape. You will. This is a 28 ounce piece of goodness right here. Now, how many of you have ever went in a restaurant and ordered a New York strip? You're getting that strip side. But ooh, we have joined together and married two families here. We're getting part of that filet side over here. So where does this beautiful piece of meat come from? Back there in the short loin, but they cut that T and that bone out of there and they get that filet side. I guess it would help did we have a diagram. Remember when we did the ham deal, we used the beagle? Dookie, come here and help viewers out here a minute. Come here, buddy. Here, we were getting right in here and getting this New York strip off this right here short loin, but going in here and getting this New York strip as well. Dookie, thank you so much, buddy. So you see me take out that lime juice and it takes just a little, not very much, about a tablespoon each side, rub it in really well in that meat, let it sit there for just a second. Then I'm gonna take our Red River Ranch original and I'm gonna coat it well, both sides. But then you see me turn that steak up on the edge and take some coarse ground pepper and do that outside edge all the way around. Then we're gonna put it back in the ice box and we're gonna let it set about an hour. In one hour, bring it out, set it on the counter. Now folks, one of the biggest things that we gotta do here is let that steak come to room temp before we cook it, or these times are not gonna work for you. Now for this 28 ounce, it took nearly two hours for it to get up to about 70 degrees, because when I took it out of the ice box, it was 39. While that thing was sitting in there in the fridge ice box, chilling, we went ahead and got us a stick of softened butter. You seen it there, you did. Put it in a little bowl, like take me a fork and just mash it all up. Now we're gonna take some time. Now you see me take that time stalk and just pull them leaves off ever so gently. I learned that in herby school. We're gonna get more flavor out of them by taking that knife and really dicing them up good and fine. And we're gonna do a garlic clove, two of them, same way, mince it up really good. Reach in there and find us a rosemary. Pull them leaves off her, minced it up really fine as well. Now I'm gonna go right out there to the garden, which don't exist, and get me two green onions, enough that I can dice up the tops of them. You've seen me over here with my one of my favorite ingredients that brings out so much flavor as a dried pepper, that is a dried ancho chili. Now I just buy them a sack full at a time, and I just use the, what Chop is? Chopomatic? Chopomatic. <laughs> Pour them in an empty seasoning jar, you got it there, cause you can use it on so many things. Put all this in there with that butter. Mix it up really well. I mean, make sure it is incorporated so good. Then take you some of that stuff that I really hate in the wind. What is it? Cling wrap, yeah. Layer out there, spoon your butter out there, make you a log out of it, roll it up, tie the ends, stick it back in the ice box, gonna let it set about an hour. Here we are ready to go with all our ingredients. We have the steak here ready to go. What do we got? An old Griswold sitting here. Duke says it's time. Is it time, Dukey? So, Folks, start it on about medium high. We're gonna take us one tablespoon of butter, which is about 
that much in Oklahoma. Drop her right in there. Folks, I have become a great admirer of avocado oil. How about you, Dookie? Was this a good year? He said it was a great one. I like to put two tablespoons in there. Instead of using olive oil, I really like to use avocado oil. It's going to help that butter keep from burning, but I think it has so much more of a unique flavor that it brings out. And how long are we going to let that sit? Right till we can begin to see that butter go to browning. You can see this color is begin to brown up a little. Take this beautiful piece of meat, Dookie, and lay her right in here. Listen. Whoa, ain't that a pretty sound, Dookie? It is. Folks, get you a device because you're going to need one. We need to start the timer. Now, on this big of steak, we're going to go four minutes on this side. And then we're going to flip it. Now, I hear some of you out there thinking, Kent, where's the herby butter? Well, folks, if we put that herby butter in there to start with, we'd be burning some of them herbies plumb up. So don't be thinking, I forgot it, because mm -mm, I ain't. Well, according to the Waterbury over here, it has been four minutes. Now, let's turn him over. Ooh, ain't that pretty right there, folks? We're going to go four more. Well, we've been on four one side. You see me flip it. We've been on four on the other side. So at this time, take your two of them little herby butters, drop right in there so they can go to melting. Let's turn him back over. Places one up on top. Make sure you've got something to hold on to this skillet. Scoot that steak over. Get to it. And we're going to just do this for two minutes, folks. Well, folks, it's been another two. Let's turn him over. If you can get a hold of him somewhere. Look at that good color. Let's go ahead and put one in there and one on top. And let's baste him for two more minutes. Because, folks, he needs to sit there and rest for about five minutes. If that don't make you taste buds want to jump out there and just gnaw it to the bone, something wrong with your buds. But hey, I'm liking y'all. Know what I mean? I'm going to give you a bonus. Who don't like a bonus? See all this good stuff that's left in here? Mm. I mean, it smells so good. So guess what? We done got us one pound of mushrooms. We're going to turn her back on to a low heat, and we're going to dump them rascals in there. And we're going to stir them around. You, what? You don't have one of these? These mesquite spatulas that we make? And let's stir it around and get some of that good golden color and all that good flavor up there on them shrooms because mm, it is what I'm talking, fine dining. And why waste all them herb pieces that was in there in the bottom of that pan when they could be loving on these mushrooms? So you're just going to cook these for three to four minutes till they get good and tender, but I want them to get all that good color in there. Well, folks, this dog will hunt. It is a done deal. Now, we're looking at that target range anywhere from about 120 to 140. I'm looking for about 130 is what I'm after. And we're going to cut this right down that T-bone. Shan's side on one side, mine on the other. So get your tongs, find that bone in here, seam right here, and just come right down. Oh, that cuts like butter. So just go ahead and cut him there. Bring him out here like this. And then let's cut this one. This is the strip side. And just take him and pull him out here where he can smile. Mm. Ain't that a beautiful sight it is. And my subjects are thinking, I don't know. Hang on. There's no dogs more important than these two to me and Shan. Dookie says, I am ready for some beef. Good job. Do we get any tail wags? <laughs> oh, man. Yep, yep. It is good. Well... It met the approval of the two food critics of his, didn't I want to tell you, when Shan zooms in here again, and you can see this, two sides to this steak, so much more tender here. Now, this is a tender piece of beef because we made it that way even more when we had put the lime juice on it. Now, I'm not talking about masking flavor. I'm talking about enhancing, bringing out more flavor. That goes along with the lime juice, the seasoning, star of the show, the meat, and the herby butter. But that filet side, which is always Shan's side because she ain't got as many teeth as I do and she need <laughs> tender meat. But I'll eat either one of them, folks, and I'll gnaw that bone. But also, this has a presentation factor. 
when you can cook this rascal and you set it out there and that old T-bone's just shining with them herbs and them little mushrooms scattered around, people come in the house and they say, that guy's a chef. He knows what he's doing. And when they eat it, you'll be one of them Michelin star diners, you will, and you won't even have to kick the tires on either side. It is that good at eating. And it's cut like butter, folks. Mm. Oh my gosh, smooth, silky, lower and lower we go. Wow. That butter and them herbs that comes out there might be the best steak I've ever eaten in my life and I've cooked thousands of them and you can too by just following this recipe. Well, I hope y'all enjoyed this because we sure did and it was sort of nice in a way to cook in a controlled environment, it was. Recipe is so easy, you just got to follow the times and a little bit of work there, but it's all very well worth it. And that herby butter you got left, oh folks, don't be thinking about you, you don't know what to do with it. You can put that stuff on garlic bread, you can put it on anything you want. Also, I'd like to tell all our new viewers, welcome you so much to our family. Get in here and get a hug, because that's what we are. We are family. Now, always remember that we need you to like, share, and subscribe to this channel. Be sure and hit the dingy dong bell up there so you get the notifications of when the videos come out. And let me ask y'all a question. Do you know when the videos come out? 2.30 Central Time every Wednesday. We're getting to share food, but we're making a lot of family. As always, I tip my hat to all our service men and women and veterans who have kept this old country safe. Whether you be here in the States or you're shipped off abroad somewhere, we appreciate what you do and we don't never forget. Mr. Rogers said, we all need to be better neighbors, so share the food, the videos with the neighbors. God bless you each and every one, and I'll see you down the Porterhouse Herb Buttered Seared Cast Iron Steak Special. And folks, I usually get the last one, but today I don't. It'll make everybody come together. Together? Don't forget to order that new cookbook, Family Faith and the Feast. Big Family Feast. <laughs> Would you like to retake that, Shannon? That's a good cook.